Let's talk about the speed reload now. Now there's a couple different ways to do a speed reload, just like there is with a tack reload. Efficiency is obviously the key because when you're doing a combat or speed reload, obviously something's wrong. Or if you're in a competitive environment, obviously you're trying to get that gun back up so you can bump your name up on that list. Now, the key with the speed reload, a couple different ways. You just saw me do one, but I used a couple of enhancements on my gun that helped me with that. But we're not, let's not talk about that right now. It's a whole different class. The basic function of this, when that bolt locks to the rear, I want to have that emergency reload source like you just saw me have on the tack reload over here. Now, workspace. Two different workspaces you can use, and this is where I will get a little bit controversial probably, or some of you may think so. There's the technique where you keep the weapon up in the stock in the shoulder, and you're doing all your weapons manipulation down here. You also have the workspace. This is the controversy. Which one do I do? Do I do the doctrine technique where I keep the magazine coming from up underneath and inserting that box into a box? If you are static, you can do this. Okay, I just kind of did it there a second ago and I put the magazine in. You can also do the weapon trap, okay, like I did with the tack reload. Why would I want to do this? Well, just like the tack reload, if I need to move and reload, I could do that. The other controversy is where's your muzzle going? Any weapon manipulation I do, of course I'm aware of my target's foreground or background. Do I have any good guys or bad guys or friendlies or anybody in that, in that situation where I need to bring this muzzle up? Well, that's what I'm going to be very cognitive of, and I'm always looking for work. I'm always looking for that position to bring the weapon system up, whether it's tack reload, speed reload, malfunctions, or just moving. Now, I found, coming from a force reconnaissance background, we find ourselves doing IA drills a lot, meaning tactics, moving around each other, running through the field, through the woods, through the desert, trying to bound and engage on the enemy. And typically, we would run like this, and, and to avoid flagging anybody else, we would reload down here. We also did that because of CQB considerations. We didn't want to be doing this in the house and possibly sweeping people. So there are time and place opportunities to do each one of these. And that's what I'm talking about here. If you absolutely are in a worst case scenario and you have to do it, just try to keep your head up. Just remember, always look for work. Insert the mag, do what you have to do. But I would prefer to either identify, load it quickly, get the stock back up because you're in a critical reload. You've got to get rounds down range. If you've got the time, boom, insert the magazine in your workspace because you may just have to move. So again, there's lots of different scenarios and lots of different techniques that I'm not absolute to. I'm always being able to adapt to any environment that I'm in. CQB, you may have to do a different reload than you do out in the battlefield doing an IA drill or out on the competition range. So it just depends on your shooting lifestyle and your job. Let's talk about the technique. When I engage, okay, when this bolt locks to the rear, the first thing I'm doing is I ID the chamber. Now, a lot of people say, well, I can feel my bolt lock to the rear. Oh, can you? Well, sure, if you're on a competition range or you're shooting like I am right here, of course I know my gun inside and out. I know what it feels like. But I will tell you under critical stress, when you're in a CQB situation and you're engaging with a gun and you have armor and you have loud noises or calm headsets on, there's people talking, a lot of different things happening, sometimes you can't. Okay, so we go with that worst case scenario. If I can't, I'm going to ID. The other reason I ID is just in case I think I'm out of ammo, but it could be a malfunction. So what if I think I'm out of ammo and I go right into a reload and I put a good magazine into a bad gun? Now I've got even more problems to deal with. Now I'm breaking the whole situation down where I could have identified and went, oh, it's a stovepipe. Oh, it's a, it's a double feed or it's some other problem that I could fix immediately instead of doing excessive or waste motion. So that's what you need to take in consideration on the efficiency side of the house when conducting speed reloads. Most important part, ID. Now, if you're going to break the weapon down, sometimes you'll see the weapon in the magazine twist hard and the magazine goes flying. Okay, this is not to do some fancy throw a magazine in the air and hit the guy next to you on the range. And don't try that, okay? It hurts. Um, the technique is for clearing the magazine, but it's a dynamic movement. It's an ID, so I'm rolling, and I'm trying to get it in my workspace as fast as possible so I can get that other mag in. So what happens is when I ID and I work it fast, the magazine just naturally goes. So ID, I'm starting to press here. Magazine's depressed. I've got to get that, that empty magazine out of the gun. And as I'm rotating, the magazine just flies right out. 
And this also does help if you have sandy environments or out of spec mags for some reason, or the mags get dented or dings or those little rocks, it will help with inertia get the magazine out of the gun. But the point is getting the weapon in the workspace as fast as possible. Okay, so when the weapon's in the workspace, I'm acquiring that magazine. Now let me pick up my mags and talk about that. I'm gonna go ahead and tack reload so I have one round in the chamber and an empty magazine. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna go ahead and engage with one round and you're gonna see the bolt locked to the rear. The bolt is locked to the rear. I'm gonna ID, get rid of the magazine, insert the new one. Now here's the question, okay? What do I push? I push the bolt catch to send the bolt home. But how do I do it? A couple different methods. Doctrine method is to slap. You can also press. Here's the problem I have with slapping. If you are a slapper, which I see a lot of people just come up and hit, if you've got an extended paddle or it sticks out a little bit, which military and law enforcement guys can't really modify their weapons, so remember this, when you slap, sometimes under stress, your hand cups. And when your hand cups, you miss the button. And then you gotta eventually press the button anyways. So I found over time that maybe two, three times out of 10, I would miss it on the first one and have to press in or eventually use my thumb. So I insert the magazine and I push the button. Now, a lot of people say, well, don't do that because under stress, you lose dexterity. Well, I call BS on that because if a fighter pilot can manipulate many buttons, levers, ailerons, and throttles and sticks while he's in an under stress situation, what makes us so different when we have a tool in our hands that may determine life or death? So think about that. And if you don't agree with that, put down the gun magazines for a second pick up a psychology book, pick up a book on the human body and learn what your body does and what it is actually capable of. Lance Armstrong can ride a bicycle at 190 beats per minute and do a lot of different things, change gears, talk on comms, eat a gel, drink water, but he's still doing it at speed because he trains at speed. Fighter pilots train at speed. We are no different. So when you're running a gun, remember, is it controversial or are you able to actually do it? So that's what I do. I press that button, send the bolt home. And now we're back into the fight. Pantio.